Hey, this is Greg Howe, and you are watching the Guitar Mania channel. Welcome to Vienna. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Good to have you here in the Austrian capital. It's a pleasure. We've been looking forward to this interview for a very long time. Oh, that's cool. Very nice. Did you have a good gig last night? It was fun. Yeah, it was a uh, smaller place, but it was a uh, great crowd, enthusiastic, mm -hmm. and so uh, it's always fun. It's always fun to play anywhere. You know what, Stu Ham tonight, uh, and playing as part of the Stu Ham band? Yeah, it's primarily his show. Mm -hmm. So it's the Stu Ham show, and probably 80, 75 to 80 percent of the, the material is his. But uh, it's fun to be to be on it. It's a different kind of, you know, his music's a little different than what I'm accustomed to playing. Mm. So it's a fun departure. How know. did you prepare for the tour? <sighs> Irresponsibly. <laughs> I had, uh, I had a, I've been, I was in the studio booked all the way up until I had to leave to go do some, some things in South America. Mm. And uh, I got back from South America. So I was kind of underprepared for South America. Then I got back from South America and we had a, a few days to get ready to go to Italy, in, at which, in which case we were working on a new amplifier, a tube amp, really cool tube amp that's coming out in January uh, with DV Mark, um, hand-wired. So we had to do the final touches on that. And they also had a sort of surprise uh, live streamed clinic for me. So I didn't really have a chance to listen to Stu's material until like a couple days before we started rehearsal. <laughs> and we had one day to rehearse, so uh, I just crammed the headphones and listened and listened and listened and listened and picked up a guitar when I could. But so there's a good element of improvisation. <laughs> there's a good amount of improvisation, yes. <laughs> yes. Greg, we understand you, you, you already working or you might have already finished working on your new album. It's, I would say, 80% done. My goal initially, and this is why I got myself into this sort of uh, bind that I was just talking about, I, I really wanted to, to get it done before I left to go do all these other things overseas. Uh, this way I could sort of have the al album packaged and ready to be, uh, you know, ready to go as soon as I get back in November. Okay. That's not going to happen because I couldn't quite finish it, but uh, I should be able to finish it within a couple of weeks after I get back. Can so. you tell us about what it will be about? What? You know, honestly, it's hard to say. It's hard for me to assess my own stuff. It's easier when other people listen to it and they hear things differently than I do. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard, difficult for me to self-evaluate, but I will say that a, a lot of the feedback that I've been getting from people who have heard some of the material is that it feels maybe a little bit more throwback to some of the you know, mid 90s kind of stuff that I was doing with like the five album and, and Parallax and things like that. So uh, I think it's sort of more of a, you know, I stepped away from the instrumental thing for a minute and I really wanted to get into a vocal band. And we put a really cool band together called Marigold mm. and we just did not get along with each other. So as much as I think the album came out nice and I think the everybody in that band is very talented, it was a disappointment because I really wanted to go down that road. Um, so until another situation comes about like that and you know I'm back in the instrumental world and so I think that I just sort of sat back and listened to some of my own material and got, just got a comprehensive dose of what I've done because I've you know what I've done is uh, covered a, a, a pretty broad spectrum genre wise you know it gets pretty rock sometimes it gets kind of jazzy sometimes mm. it's sort of hard to define how do you how do you compose? I mean, how long does it take for a composition to be like where you where, to reach a point where you say now it's it's finalized, it's ready to go on the record? Um, that's a really good question, and there is no answer because it's it's never the same. So you know, I get very lucky once in a great while where I'll wake up in the morning and and a whole idea will just appear in my mind. It'll just show up like a Christmas gift, and I'll know the melody and I'll know the chord changes and I know the bridge and I know exactly what, how it should happen and it just falls together. Other times I really have to work for it, I have to reach for it, and those are the times that, uh, you know, it could, it's a process that could go on for, for days, or maybe even a few weeks. Do you sit down and then jot down ideas, or like go through the harmonics, and, uh, or do you just repeat licks, or do you jam? What's, what's your approach? The approach is that it has to come from, from here. It really does. So, and, and it gets me into trouble sometimes, because sometimes I will write things that, that I'm like, man, I don't know if I can play this. 
you know. So I don't really write from a fretboard perspective. Okay. I write more from what I hear. What am I hearing? And then and now that I hear it, let's let's pick up the guitar and see how that what that looks like. What is mm. that? How does that work on a mm. guitar? Mm. Does it even work on a guitar? Mm. And uh, because I, I feel like that's a more authentic version of you know my artistic statement. Mm -hmm. I think it can be limiting or uh, you know if, if you're just writing based on what you know how to play then yeah. you're sort of being restricted by your own physical limitations. Which is a good point actually I saw on your Facebook page that you wrote about uh, trying to develop uh, to stay in shape while on tour strategy. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been successful? Well I, I, I don't remember the reference. <laughs> was, that the, was I joking? I was probably... I'm, <laughs> I don't know. I'm never probably serious on Facebook. <laughs> I, no I don't think so. I don't know what that was. I'd have to see it, the context. <laughs> of it. Uh, I, I don't know. I just saw you uh, that you're developing a s stay in shape while on tour strategy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like me being silly. I, most of my posts are very corny and silly, so that's my, that's no, my social media reputation. No, but seriously, I mean, is there anything that you, that you practice while you're on tour or you're warming up before a gig? Not really. I just try to stay limber. And mm -hmm. um, if there are certain parts of songs, luckily with this particular set, there aren't too many things that are ultra demanding. Um, but I find that if I work on things that are really difficult for me to do, or that I can't do really, um, then it makes uh, the things I can do much easier. Mm -hmm. So I heard Billy Sheehan say that years ago. I, I pr try to practice things that I can't play. And then it's sort of like an isometric, a mental isometrics. You know, it's like you, you go back to your normal stuff, and it's like, oh, this is, this is not so bad. So yeah. I just try to stay limber and uh, I do have a little guitar neck. It's called a shred neck that I can. It's like this long, and you can just kind of. It's got strings on it, and and I can mess around in the van sometimes mm. if I'm not sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, you you you're also a very uh, accomplished teacher, and 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 you, and you you give master classes. So teaching, I understand, is a very important element of your. Uh, of you being a musician, uh, what is your approach to teaching? Is uh, do you have an individual approach where, when you can, you go into the needs of an individual student, or is there something that's generally universally uh, applicable? No, it's definitely individual based, uh, one hundred percent. Because I don't believe in curriculum or academia in that manner. You know, the music, we man invented the rules of music and music theory and all that stuff. And, and these are really just sort of, um, just sort of mathematical uh, uh, consistencies that, that take place within Western harmony. And they can be useful in you know, developing chords or developing scales or developing harmony concepts, but they're not rules handed down by some universal force. So to me, if something sounds good, and something works, and something makes you feel something, or conveys an emotion to someone, then then it's correct. Mm. You're doing the right thing. And if and if someone happens to be breaking the rules of you know the academic rules of music, uh, to me that that doesn't mean anything. Mm. I mean, how could you be breaking a rule if people are happy with what they're hearing? The only goal I have, and and I explain to people my approach all the time, which is that. I'm just, trying, I'm just trying to move you. I'm just trying to get you to feel something. And then people will say, well, melody is the most important thing, right? And I'll say, uh, not necessarily. If it, it is, if that's the, if that's the basis of your, design, of your creation, um, maybe it's the rhythmic thing. Maybe it's just a sound effect. Maybe it's the fact that there's no melody. Maybe that's what makes it interesting. So uh, I really try to encourage students to, to think that way. The other thing that's important is that when a student says, and sometimes they do, uh, so I'm here, Greg, and what do we do? What do we do first? I always say, what do you want to do? What do you want to do with your, what, is, what are your goals as a guitar player? Because if your goal is to, say, be a session musician, then I might encourage you to really get uh, acclimated to equipment and understanding how to, how to get different tones, uh, understanding the importance of reading charts, maybe even sight reading. Um, understanding how to interact with a producer or somebody that's in the studio that's directing directing the whole event. 
Um, if you're looking to be an artist, someone that's creating new music, then that's a whole different approach. Mm. Um, if you want to be touring, then th there's going to be different advice. If you want to, it, it really depends on what your goals are. Because uh, to say that I want to become a better guitar player, I don't know what that means. I mean, Steve Ray Vaughan is one of the greatest guitar players of all time, uh, but he doesn't play like Alan Holdsworth, and he probably has never played a melodic minor scale in mm -hmm. his world, and uh, nor would he have any need to. So. I don't think that just collecting information for the sake of just because somebody says that you should do this has anything really to do with um, you know cultivating a, an artistic mindset. And I think probably that's 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 not an easy task because sometimes it might involve trial and error. What is it really that you want to do? What, yeah. what is your style? And, right. And and I mean, was there a, because you are also very versatile. I mean, you're on the one hand you're sort of, let's say bit of the rock guitar player, mm -hmm. but you also have a strong jazz element in your playing. And then sometimes you, you go into really uh, fusion yeah. uh, stuff. So uh, was that always like this or did that also evolve? It was, it's interesting. Uh, that's a good question. And the truth of the matter is when I, the first me, uh, album that I ever did that was sort of categorized under fusion mm. was an album called Introspection. And that was the fourth album of my original record deal. So I had my first album, which was called Greg Howe, which was pretty much a rock album that fitted, that, that would, suited the label's uh, you know, style at the time. And then we did two albums with my rock band called How To. And then I, my fourth album for the original contract was Introspection. And I got to record that at home, so I, I got to do whatever I wanted. Um, I didn't think of it as fusion. Mm -hmm. I thought of it as just songs that were in my head. So I was really surprised when the reviews came out and uh, people were saying, this is a fusion record. And I'd see like reviews next to Scott Henderson and stuff, and I was like, "Really? I'm fusion? <laughs> really? Okay." Um, you know, I listened to everything, and I, I've always listened to everything. I like every kind of music, so, or, or at least there's always something to, to be absorbed from any and anything. So I think that I don't really sit down with a with an idea in terms of I don't I, I've never in my life sat down and said I want to write a fusion song or I want to write a jazz song or I want to write a rock song I just go I have an idea in my head and it goes like this so uh, it's it's uh, I don't even remember your original question but I, th I think I've sort of answered something no no yeah absolutely <laughs> you did uh, if you were to give one piece of advice to young aspiring musicians who want to make a living out of being a professional musician mm -hmm. what would that be I would give the same advice to them that I would give to somebody who wanted to be a, a great architect, you know, or a great uh, engineer, or a great, uh, you know, screenplay writer, which is that you just have to love it. It has to be a passion that goes beyond a, uh, an expectation of monetary gain. It, it's a very strange thing that once you don't care whether or not you make, when you love something that much, you don't care whether or not big mon money comes in. Mm. And it's really, that's the, and that's the passion that actually allows you to make money. So when you mean, when you mean it that much, then people feel it and they, they sense it and then it, it, it works. But if the idea is to try to figure out a formula that's gonna enable you to make, to be successful, um, it might be a tougher road. I, I just I think that it's really important to just make sure you love what you're doing, really love it, and just in, in this way when when you come up against adversity, you come up against obstacles, you come up against bumps in the road, and there are many, many, many of them. Um, it doesn't knock you off the horse. You know, you just you say, well, that kind of sucks, but I got to keep doing this. It's very corny. It's a very corny statement to say that. Um, I didn't really choose music because music, I feel like music chose me. But it really does feel like that, as corny as that sounds. Mm. I don't know that there's anything else I can imagine doing um, and, and, be f and feel fulfilled mm. doing it. At some, at some point, maybe. Um, maybe producing. I do like producing um, bands and artists. And, and I really love seeing the potential. There's so many upcoming young guitar players uh, that are just and, and just musicians in general who are who are just incredible, and I always think to myself, man, I, I I know that I could, if I was there, I could direct them, in a way that would really, have, you know, cause an impact. 
So I could picture myself getting into that at some point, maybe. Can you name some? Oh, there's just so many of them. I wouldn't even know where to start. I really wouldn't. Yeah. Um, but I mean, every time I turn around, there's just some new, super talented, you know, guy that's doing some, some really cool stuff. Mm. Greg, thank you so much. You've been very generous with My your pleasure. time. Looking forward to the new album. Thank you very much.